Hello, in this video, I want to talk about Grammarly for Google Docs specifically. So I am using the premium version of Grammarly and I wanna show you how you can make the most of it. Grammarly has improved a ton with its integration with Google Docs. So I wanted to do an updated video and show you how to make the most of it. So first step, you need to make sure you have the Grammarly Chrome extension downloaded. Again, I am on premium here and then make sure that the corrections in Google Docs is enabled. So I have everything turned on here. After that, you might not see the Grammarly sidebar open. You would see it at the bottom of the document right here and just click on it to open up the Grammarly sidebar. First off, you can adjust the goals if you want to make this more informal, if you are looking for a specific tone. I'm just leaving it on the defaults right now, pressing done. So now I can go through just on the sidebar here and it would jump me to each of the corrections. So here they're telling me that I should add a hyphen. So instead of eight year old, it should be eight year old with hyphens. And if I don't understand exactly what this correction means, I can click on the learn more and that would open up a whole card explaining what that correction means. So that can be really helpful as we're learning and improving our grammar and also some vocabulary things potentially. So you can always pull that open to read more and then click on less to make it small again. If I want to accept that change, I can just click on it right here and you'll see that it updated it and accepted that change. Here it's telling me I forgot a space, which is true. So again, I'm gonna just click on it and accept that one. So here it's telling me it should be grown up again with a hyphen. Maybe that's something that I don't agree with. Hit the trash can to dismiss or ignore this suggestion. That's one that I don't want to accept. So sometimes we don't want to accept all the changes that Grammarly tells us to make because you know what? They're not always accurate according to exactly what we're trying to write. So it is important to go through these and not just go ahead and like accept, 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 but to be critical in thinking about whether or not it is a correction that we want. So I'm going to ignore this particular correction. And then again, you know, I can accept even if I forget to put a comma like here, I forgot to put a comma. It will tell me you're forgetting to put a comma. And if I don't remember exactly when am I supposed to use commas? When am I not? You can click on learn more and that will again explain to you what a comma symbolizes, when it's supposed to be used, and it will give you some examples of incorrect and correct uses of commas. So that can be really helpful. Don't forget to use the learn more when you are forgetting about what this correction means because ultimately we wanna get better at our writing, right? Anyway, I can go through and I can accept and reject all these various changes that Grammarly has. So you'll see the ones that are red, it means correctness. The ones that are blue are clarity suggestions. So for example, this is an unclear antecedent and so that is a clarity issue. Things that are purple here would be delivery. The formality of this one is what they're giving me some suggestion on. So um, again, this is red for correctness, blue for clarity, green for engagement. Like here, um, it's saying instead of very afraid, maybe I can use a better vocabulary term like terrified. And so I could change that. And then purples for delivery and like making sure that my tone is what I'm going for. So that's how you can use Grammarly right in Google Docs to correct your work. And again, if you want to kind of change, adjust some of your goals that you have, you can click there and you can change some of the tone there so that it will give you more appropriate feedback based on what you're trying to write. Anyway, that's gonna be it for the quick little introduction to Grammarly for Google Docs. I uh, have another video where I show some more robust features that you can get when you go to Grammarly.com itself. So I'll do a little bit of a comparison there. But again, make sure that you have the Chrome extension not only downloaded, but also make sure that it is enabled so that you have it toggled on if you don't see this little thing at the bottom to open up your Grammarly sidebar. Just make sure that you've done the extension and that you've toggled it on. You might need to toggle it off and then on and refresh if you are having any difficulty. But that should really be it. And that'll be it for this video. Bye.